Are you ready for the word this morning? I said, are you ready for the word? We are beginning a, a, a series. Okay. I'm getting good at this now. <laughs> it's a series, y'all. We are, we are, I, I, I wanted to understand that uh, what I want to share with you probably in part of our vision for this year is to go deeper. Yes. And what? Yes. Grow stronger. Yes. And reach higher. Yes. Right? That's what we're on about this year. So I, I want to continue to deepen our roots as we reach higher and higher and growing stronger in our faith in Jesus' name. I think it's important that I open up my, uh, my sermonic devotion by letting us know the devil is defeated. Somebody shout yes. yes. But the devil is not yet dethroned. Did you get that? Once you misunderstand that, the greatest danger that you can do in your life, Brother Patimo, that was a powerful word. Actually, Brad had a word for you. So make sure that you see him afterwards. Very great word for you. And I can resonate with that that word that he shared with me. Because the devil is defeated and is not yet dethroned. One of the things, mistakes that you can do when you are involved in a battle, it is either you can underrate your enemy or you can overrate him. If you overrate him, you're going to have a problem. You can't win that battle. If you underrate him, you're going to become actually a victim of that war. So I think Christians oftentimes, we are good at quoting the rhetorics and the religious words that we, uh, we confess about um, our victory is in Jesus Christ. But the reality is, why are you still living a defeated life? So I believe it is because not understanding what you are actually involved, the nature of the battle that you're involved in. So I want, I want us to unpen that, and I want to take my time. I want to make sure that all of us are clear on something. So I want to make sure that you do not miss this series because it's going to help you. By the way, you gave a very powerful testimony yesterday, my brother. My God bless you. Powerful, powerful testimony that you gave yesterday. And it, it contains some of this stuff that I want to share with us today. In the creation realities, when God created men, we are told by the scriptures, number one, God created Adam and Eve, and the first thing that God gave them was not a car, was not a house, was not, was not money, was not riches. Remember, the first thing that God gave to men was an image, because image is everything. Image gets, that's where you get your identity. Your identity does not come from stuff, it comes from God. You are with me? Stay with me as we go together. When he gave him dominion, he then gave him the jurisdiction. He put him in a garden. And I know I, don't, I didn't give you that verse, you know, but I want you to put that verse, Genesis 2 and verse 15. And let's start there. Because I want to unpack some few things that I believe that can help us as we unpack that one together. Genesis 2 and verse 15. And let's see what the Bible says. And I want us all of us to read that together. One, two, go. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. I want us to repeat again. Together, all the voices in destiny, there is power in reading the word in the atmosphere. One, two, go. Then the Lord God took the man. That word tend and keep it becomes very important. The first word tend, it means is the word yada. And that word has to do is govern this place, this garden for me. Remember, God gave him authority or dominion to rule in the garden. You are with me? So that's the first thing that I wanted to understand because I think once you understand that, you understand the nature of your battle. The first thing then God does, he says, I've given you dominion, but here is the sphere of influence. Here is a garden, and I want you to do two things for me. Look after this garden. That's the word, tend it. That means dress it for me. Make sure that you are responsible cultivating this spot. Not the whole jungle, just this spot. That's your sphere of influence. And he says, 
dress it and keep it. And the word keep it is the word shama. And it has the same tone. So you've got uh, yada and shama. Those words all you have to do is, this is the territory of governance. I want you to rule after. Once you are in this garden, everything else, you give names to the influence of these animals. You are now a, a prince or a governor over this territory. That was the idea of God. Now it's important that you understand that as we go together because when God did that, that makes you now to understand what was God saying. The word Yada and Shama that I've given you, tend and keep it. That's a priesthood term, which means the idea of God in putting Adam in the Garden of Eden, he wanted him to serve in what we call the priesthood dimension. A priest is one who is a servant of God who is a mediator between men and people. This will help you to understand. That's why in every religion, they have a representative. If you go to Buddhism, Japan, where I've just come back from, they've got 8 million gods. In every house, there's an altar. Under that altar, there must be a priest or a priestess. The priest is there to represent these people by taking their problems to the priest before their gods. But you see, you don't understand that the, what you see in the demonic world, it, they are copying it from the authentic one. Because the devil cannot create. And because he cannot create, whatever he saw in heaven, when he was a prince and as a cherub or an anointed cherub in heaven, that's what he has done. So you've got a hierarchy under the system of the devil. You've got a hierarchy under the system of God. When Jesus said in Matthew 16, stay with me, it's all good. In Matthew chapter 16, when he says, who do men say that I am? And says, some say Elijah, some say Isaiah, some say Jeremiah, some say you're one of the prophets. And he says, uh, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father that is in heaven. You're still with me? And then he says, he says that, uh, he, he, he then says, I'll give you the keys of the kingdom so that whatever you lose, here shall be loosed up there and whatever you bind here shall be bound up there and then says Jesus then says I will build my church you remember that and that word church is the Greek word ecclesia say that with me ecclesia ecclesia was a group of legislators that was common in Rome so when Jesus says I will build mine he is aware that Rome had a system of colonizing. The Jewish people were a colony under the Rome system. Rome had colonized the Jewish people, made them to pay tax, made them to suffer in many, many, many ways, which is what where we get it today, the colonization of the nations. I'll give you an example because I'm from Zimbabwe. Sometime 1890, Cecil John Rhodes, is in South Africa, he's a British guy, decides with this group of conglomerates, let's go to Zimbabwe. It was called Rhodesia then. And when he arrives in Zimbabwe, he fights with the main tribe called Mashonaland and defeated them. They had spears, they had guns, you know. And they fought against the second tribe, which is the Ndebeles, which is my tribe. And, and they the, the kept on winning those territories. And then they said, now Zimbabwe, because we have defeated you, you are now becoming a British colony. So you are now under the British rule, which means we give you and tell you how to do things. Your systems and the culture that you had as a people is no longer. You are now controlled by Britain, while it was Zimbabwe. Unfair, right? But when you come to think of it, then they took their farms and they... Uh, all because the minerals in Zimbabwe and the diamonds that are in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is the only country as far as I know that has got a larger quantity of blue diamonds. You don't get them anywhere. So Britain says, we're going to rule over you. You don't have a voice. You don't have a say. Stay with me. Stay with me. You're with me. So if you're a colony, so when you see me dressed like this, is the British mentality. I drink tea more than water is the British mentality because they took away our rights so we were subjected to the colonization by the British people. But I wanted to understand that was then. Now we got our independence. But I wanted to understand something that's happening. The governments of this world 
they follow a system. If you don't understand that system, how nations colonize other nations is the same system, but it is in the Bible. It's a system that I want you to understand how govern, governments end up terrorizing, colonizing other nations. Now, in the Garden of Eden, the responsibility of Adam was just twofold. Look after the garden and govern it for me. The enemy was not happy. You know, in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis, he opens up by telling you that the devil came and found a body that he borrowed, and that was the body of a snake. The conversation that comes in the garden, it's key that you understand this. Because the devil is a prince in the demonic system. He's one of the two princes. If you read Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. What is a prince? A prince is first. A prince is the one that goes first. Is the one that colonizes first. So the devil knew that if Adam is to govern his territory, let me see if I use my tactic, which will be the tactic that is used politically in the world today. And then he says to him, did God say you should not eat of this tree? And I wanted to see that when the devil comes, he doesn't force Adam and Eve to eat the fruit. He entices them. It is the part of enticement that takes place that made Adam and Eve to fail on the jurisdiction. After they failed on that, their dominion was taken away from them. You and I now understand. So let me give you now a structure so that you can understand that God's mind was not just to raise up a bunch of Christians. You are not meant to be just a Christian. Christianity is the best level. It's the lowest rung of your life. You are meant by God to be a priest and a king. You with me? Once you understand your role, it's all throughout the Bible. And I'm going to show you now the scriptures. If you look at the calling of Abraham. Abraham, when he meets Melchizedek, he meets Melchizedek because he was a priest. And the Bible says he knows how to raise an altar before God. And that's how Abraham gets called the father of many nations and God's beloved. But not only was there an establishment of that culture. We are told after Adam and Eve failed, Cain left Eden and went into another land and he formalized his own civilization. The strength of every nation is determined by the altars that are built in those nations. So you go to certain countries, prostitution is the main thing because every country is governed by an altar. And every altar that is established, it determines the strength of that country. So when you go to Dubai and you begin to see the grandiose buildings that are there, what you don't realize is what they don't tell you. That oftentimes there is a bloodshed of human beings that takes place in the underworld. But you only work with what you see. I can say this with an authority. That in Australia where you are, if you don't identify the altars that are set up in this country, you are playing games. I want to warn every marriage that is here. Your marriage is not going to stay together because you are romantically in love. You need to understand there is something bigger that you are fighting against. You got to understand that marriage was not instituted by Australian laws 1961. Marriage laws are instituted by God. So if your marriage is going to work Forget about what you read on Google, what you are given by books, or do this, kiss them four times, and, and do this, and tell them I love you every time. All those are secondary. It needs to stand on the foundation of the person that said marriage should work. Where did marriage begin? Marriage began in the Garden of Eden. Who was the father-in-law? God. Who was the father who gave the bride? God. Who was the marriage officer? God. And God said, therefore, Man shall leave his father and mother, and two shall become one. 
So marriages don't work just because both of you are educated. Just because both of you have got degrees. Just because both of you drive, ni drive nice cars. Just because both of you, you are so much in love infatuatively. God wanted to understand if marriage will stand, it must stand on the principles and patterns that were ordained by the founder of marriage. Woo. Are you ready for me this morning? I said, are you ready for me this morning? So, the goal of Christianity is not just for you to be a Christian. Because the term Christian came in Acts chapter 13. That was in Antioch, where they were first called Christians. But the goal of working with God is so that you can retain your priesthood. I'm going to prove for you right now in the scriptures. Chapter 19, verse 6, the book of Exodus. Let's go there, you know, again. And I want you all to read together with me. And let's see what the word of God says. Chapter 19, verse 6. I want everybody to read that one. One, two, go. Now read it again now. Thank you for practice. I want you to read it again. <laughs> Out loud with your voices. One, two, go. God says, my goal, I want them to be unto me a kingdom of what? Priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. And of course, you now therefore begin to realize the system of working with God is about priesthood. Where there is a priest, there must be an altar. We're reminded by Brother Patimo here that whenever we take there for the emblems every Sunday, it's not supposed to be a religious rhetoric. It's not supposed to be something that you just get used to. It is because that's how we remember that our altar, because the stronger the altar, the stronger the bondage, or the stronger the freedom. If you understand why you partake on Holy Communion, you have got already one victory shout for yourself there. But because a lot of Christians don't understand, it ends on the juice and that wafer. But if you miss the point, what is behind this little wafer and this little cup, you, you will miss something that has to do with your destiny. There shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a nation. And because God wants you to become a kingdom, and he wants you to become a kingdom of priests, that will serve God. Let's see what First Peter 2 verse 9 says so that we can lay this foundation together very well, very quickly. I'm going to get out of your way because I'm going to build a few things for us as we continue next uh, week. One, two, go. Let's read together. But you are. Come on. A royal priesthood. Yes. Holy nation. Yes. Yes. So there are three levels to every child of God that they must know. Number one, your introduction when you come to Jesus Christ makes you a son. Don't feel bad, women, because there is no gender in the spirit. We are all sons. Shout with me, I'm a son. I'm a son. I can't hear you. Shout, I'm a son. I'm a son. So when we say daughters, we are, we are trying to follow the political correctness. You don't have to. In the spirit, we are all sons. Somebody shout again, I'm a son. I'm a son. <laughs> son is the first stage. That introduces you when you come to this kingdom of the hierarchy. And once you become a son, that means you are appreciating what Jesus has done for you. Sonship is about what Jesus has done for you. Sonship is about what Jesus has done for you. But the second level in your journey when you walk with God is the journey of priesthood or a priest. Now, when you become a priest, number two, uh, the, the word priest, it's important for you to understand that once you become a priest, priest, number two, priest, once you become a priest, what does that mean? You are no longer just depending on what Christ has done for me. If you are waiting only on level number one, your Christianity is boring. And not only is boring, the enemy capitalizes on what you don't know. So it's important that you understand your role is to be a priest. That's what God said right from the Old Testament. Why did Abel uh, accept his offering? Because he understood that there must be an altar and there must be a fire. 
That's the reason why Cain was not accepted. Because the offering of Abel was acceptable to God. Because Abel knew this is a priestly stuff that we need to do. Are you with me somebody? So I wanted to understand that when you become a priest, you become a representative that stands between God and the earth. Or about, uh, above heaven and what's happened here on earth as a priest. God sees you as a mediator. He wanted to be his mediator because Christ is now living in you. He came, he died for you. He is now alive in you. So that sonship has to do with what is done for you. But priesthood is that which God wants to do in you and through you. Mm -hmm. So if you are a priest, it's not only about what he has done for me now, but what he wants to do in me and through me. So that this world can be changed. So that we understand the power of being the light and the salt in the world. Somebody declare, I am a priest. The last level is the level of kingship. Now, when you are a king, once again, that's a term that is used by the Bible representing all of us. Kingdom of priests and kings. That brings us to a level of understanding we are called to rule and to reign. Here's my prayer this morning. You are called by God to live on those levels. From sonship to a priesthood. From priesthood, you understand your kingship. Once you are a kingship, you need to understand there is a domain. And when you have got a domain, what we saw in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, there is a territory. So allow me to say, every child of God has a God-given territory that they are supposed to rule and reign in. And God's desire is for you to be a king in that sphere so that the enemy doesn't take advantage of that. Somebody shout, yes? Yes. Right. So let me introduce you right now to the five levels of what I call the hierarchy system of our kingdom. The hierarchy system of our kingdom. Number one, if you go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Let's go there and let's read with God's people. I want us all of us to read once again. One, two, go. For by him. Mm -hmm. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Shout with me, visible, visible. and invisible. And invisible. Let's talk. Let me, let me lay the foundation properly for you. What does that mean? Visible and invisible. That means things that I see physically and the things that I don't see. Here's the problem that you make. Let, let, me, let me help you to govern first your territory and your house. When you are renting your property where you are renting now, or when you are buying that property, it to you as a kingdom of priests and kings was not supposed only to wait on the legal documents of your mortgage or rental property, which you see. That's visible. There is another realm that controls those papers that you are holding. And that realm is the invisible realm because every building is built twice. Every life you live here on earth is twice. Oh. <laughs> Once you understand that everything is in twos, you will understand what happens. So uh, you have got a man that bought a piece of land. And when he bought a piece of land, it was just by the lake. Beautiful. He bought it. He was rejoicing that everything was fine. But you see, once he got all the documentation and the paperwork, and he realized, oh wow, this is a nice piece of island. I'm going to enjoy my life. But at night time, he began to notice something that was coming out of the lake. And these were cows that were coming out of the lake. And now he asks himself, how come cows are coming out of the lake at night time? What's happening here? Here is the problem. He bought the property according to the legal papers. But what he did not do, he did not address what is invisible. Because if you're going to address what is invisible, I can tell you right now that I know people that have told me that since we came to this house, it was my son who got sick. And he has never been sick before with this type of sickness. And the very same uh, month next year, it was my daughter. And the very next year, it was now my other son. And uh, the very other year, it was now my other daughter. What happened here? Because you bought the house. But what you did not do, you did not address what is not seen. Am I talking to somebody? I wanted to understand that what you are involved 
doing. You are involved in a warfare. But if you don't understand this warfare, it did not start with you. In the realms of creation, man is the youngest in all creation. They are ancients of old that were there before. They understand how this battle is going to be fought. And I don't want you to forget that. I say to you, the devil is defeated, but is not dethroned. So he understands the system. So first let's see the hierarchy system that God is wanting us to know. It says there, visible and invisible. So today I want you to understand every place of work that you work, there is visible and invisible. The boss that you talk to and things are coming up against you, there is visible and invisible. Every pain that you go through, understand, there is visible. Don't be fooled. You are living in two worlds. And if you don't understand, your coming to church will be in vain. Understand the nature of the warfare that we're in. That is why when I tell you about the destiny center that we are building, that this is beyond just a structure and a caricature of wanting Perth to know there's a building. We are dealing with spirits. Because you and I know very well, I have said to other people before, here's the burden of my heart. There are more rehab centers in this city than anything else. But how come when they come out, they either relapse and they don't know where to go. And some of them don't want to go back again. That's where we come in. Because we are realizing what you are taking is not just addiction. There is something invisible. You see it right now. It says there, visible and invisible. Let's start there where the thrones want to go. Whether thrones or dominion. So let me give you a structure of our hierarchy in the kingdom first. Number one, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ is where the Bible says, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Number one, the Lord Jesus Christ. When you see the Lord Jesus Christ, he's supposed to be the chief. Number one, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's supposed to be the first in creation. He's the firstborn in creation. So that's our hierarchy there. Somebody shout, the Lord Jesus Christ. Never forget that. In this kingdom, you don't represent yourself. You are represented by another. Jesus Christ has gone before you and he is our chief prince. And the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ is the firstborn among all creation. What Adam failed to do, Jesus Christ came as the last Adam. And when he came as the last Adam, he then overcame all that the enemy was trying to do. So the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in all areas and was found without sin. The Lord Jesus Christ is number one in our hierarchy. So when we pray our prayers, it is not just a cool idea to use in the name of Jesus Christ. It is because we are recognizing he is the only name recognized in the principalities. The only name that the demons are afraid of. The only name that sickness bows before. The only name that every knee shall bow to. It is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody declare the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. Number two, in our kingdom, what we read in Colossians chapter one, we then realize it talks about thrones. Now, thrones in the Bible does not have to do, it, it does not have to do with places or seats as we see when you think about a throne. Thrones are elders. You see that in Revelation chapter four and verse four. Do you have got that for me? When you see, let's read all of us together. Want to go? Around the throne were 24 and I saw So right now, let me give you what's going on in heaven. We have got the Lord Jesus Christ, our chief commander. Followed by him, we have thrones. Declare again, thrones. Thrones are elders. That are in glory. These are the ones that have got crowns and they do their crowns down when they worship him. And they worship God, all they have to do every day is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They are surrounding the throne of God. So you now understand that how do you become an elder? You become an elder in the kingdom where you represent thrones by not just by faith, but by faithfulness. Abraham is an elder. Noah is an elder. Why? Because these are the one in Hebrews chapter 11. 
talks about the heroes of faith. These are now elders. They have reached a state. So your highest rank in Christianity is to become an elder. How do you become an elder? The more you learn to hear God, the more you learn to walk in his ways, the yeah, there is rank in this kingdom. You become a throne by way that God has invested. You have been trusted in that regard. So it's important that you understand that the thrones that are out there, these are the ones that have, they have graduated. They have been ordained. They have reached a place of ordination because of what they suffered and what they went through. So it's important for you to know. And I'm sure you can understand because honestly, you die you just lived a Christian life and go to heaven. And you go, you meet uh, Isaiah, who was actually ripped apart with a hacksaw by a king. And you think we're all the same? You must be joking. Come on. Come on. Let's talk. So the more you stand against the attack of the enemy, the more you push to walk with God and do things right. It's a part that you can do. Remember? Our chief commander knows you can do it. Yes. Talk to me, somebody. He knows you can do it. Yes. You can look at me right now and say, oh, but you don't understand. You don't understand how this thing, I will tell you actually what has brought you to where you are, where you are bound. And I think we can help you so that you can be unbound, so that you can live your life victoriously. I believe I'm raising in the destiny empowered Christian church, men and women that are pushing forward to become elders in the spirit. Because once you reach that stature, even government listen to you. Amen. Go ask, there is an elder called Elijah. Elijah is the only one who can stand before King Ahab and say to King Ahab, there will be no rain because I'm the one holding the key. He did not say, God, I'm going to pray, pray, defend, this is what God is going to do. Sharaba, sharaba, sharaba. No, no. He just stands there. He has reached a state in the spirit. In his journey with God, he can be trusted. That is why when we read about Abraham, God says, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But because Abraham had reached a state in his walk with God, he has become now an elder. And because he's an elder in the spirit, he goes before God and he says, come on God you can't do this why because the elders they know they can have a conversation with their God in heaven oh Lord Jesus somebody shout glory and here's the truth not all of us may qualify to be thrones but there's one thing that I want you to understand that after thrones the second term there is dominions dominion somebody shout dominions you remember what was given to Adam? The first thing that God gave to Adam was not money, was not riches, was not Gucci, was not Nike. The first thing that God gave to Adam was an image. And he told him, I want you to rule in the garden. He gave him authority and dominion. So I want you to know dominion is a place for you and I. What a dominion is a governor of a territory. You and I are created by God to have dominion over the spheres of our life. Oh, I pray that destiny will raise men and women, boys and girls, who understand their authority. So every time when Jesus said, pray this way, you remember the Lord's Prayer that we like quoting Russian? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. There is a part that, that says, and let thy kingdom come. Now, when you say that, here's what happens to those that are ruling this kingdom of this world, which is the demonic system. They say, you are calling who? Let your kingdom come. They say, come where? Come where? This is our place. We are ruling people here with addiction, with sicknesses. We rule here. We cause every mess and every problem here. Which kingdom? So when you say, let your kingdom come, you are declaring war. Somebody said dominion. dominion. You are all dominions. That's what I want you to understand. And because you are a dominion, God wants you to rule and reign here. He wanted to understand there is nothing that ever happens to your life that God does not think you can overcome. Because even the devil is not allowed by God to touch your life without God's permission. Oh Lord Jesus. In your life as a child of God, there's one thing. When, when you Ever you enter through situations, God knows he has invested enough authority in you to overcome it. 
It doesn't matter how weak you think you are. It doesn't matter what discouragement has done. It doesn't matter what drugs have done. But if you rise up today once again and begin to declare, I am a dominion. You can stand against every attack of the enemy. You can win against addiction. You can win against every attack of the enemy. You can win against every pain. You can win against every force of darkness. And declare in Jesus' mighty name, I am a dominion. Somebody shout, I'm a dominion. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Lord Jesus Christ. We have thrones. Somebody shout, thrones. And then we have got dominion. Somebody shout, dominions. Oh, keep going. The next one is principalities, is it? Principalities. Principalities, there is a nine ranking system of angels. I've taught this before. I don't know whether it's on YouTube. There is a nine rank in system uh, in the angelic system. Cherubs, seraphs, uh, chariots, uh, angels of wisdom, and different types of angels. The angels that were involved in the crossing of the Red Sea, those are called warring angels. Those are the ones that would come and wreck the chariots of the Egyptian army and make sure they drown. So I want to understand how organized we are. You think, oh, why God has left me? You don't understand. There is no way God has left you. Because if you understand what's given to you, in the nine ranking system, we have what we call archangels. Somebody shout archangel. archangel. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. You know, let's go there quickly. Because I know when they look at me funny and I took them their, their eyes, the one I went into. Uh, let's read together together. One to go. But the prince of the kingdom. Somebody shout, there is help for me. Talk to me. Shout, there is help for me. Angels are set to be on an assignment to serve you. Angels are called ministering spirits. So you see there, Daniel and the children of Israel, they have been under captive. But you see, Daniel understood that he was not fighting against Nebuchadnezzar. That's why you stopped. You think he was fighting against the despot monarch of Babylon. It was not the Babylonian power. It was not the Persian rule. There is a prince that is called the prince of the kingdom. Just like in Australia, there is a prince that's supposed to govern and watch what happened in Australia in our light. And that prince of the kingdom that you see there is Michael came in as one of the chief princes. So in the in our kingdom, you have got Michael, you have got uh, Gabriel, and then you have got you have, you have, you have got Michael, Gabriel, Raphael. There's some of the angels that you need to understand that are mentioned in the Bible. But these archangels, their jurisdiction, Gabriel is the one who brings messages to us, and Michael is a warring angel. So it's important that you understand that as work with God. And Raphael is the angel of healing, is from the Jehovah Rapha. So that is to do the angel that carries the wings of healing in his wings. But why is it important for you to understand? We have principalities or chief princes in our kingdom that are there to represent us. So that there is a big angel of light that is watching over this nation called Australia. That is why when we declare and stand and say, Australia shall be saved. We are saying this because we understand who is fighting for us as God's people. Somebody shout glory. glory. The last in this kingdom uh, is powers powers is what is used by dominions remember because Jesus says in Acts 1 verse 8 don't leave Jerusalem until you are endued with power and I don't want to go there there are five levels of power right there powers to declare power to stand power to endure power to speak words so I want you to understand that's all under power when the power of God is functional in your life, it makes you a dominion. Because if you become a dominion and you are voiceless, you can't uh, take over anything. You need to be a dominion that has got power. So Jesus said to them, don't leave Jerusalem. Go up on the upper room and wait there because you shall receive power. Because the power is what you need over your life 
when the enemy start playing games around your life when you play games with your god-given dreams when you play games with what god has assigned for you when you play games with your finances when you play games with your family when you play games with your children power is what you need somebody shout power, power. so in our kingdom we have the lord jesus christ we have thrones we have dominions we have principalities and we have powers now the devil saw that and he copied this Ephesians 6 verse 12 let's see what it says all of us listen together want to go for against Did you understand that? Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It is against principalities. So in the demonic system, here's the hierarchy. You got the hierarchy of your kingdom. I'm sure you got it. The hierarchy of the demonic system, number one, is principalities. Principalities is the word alke in Greek. And that is to mean first to colonize. Remember what I told you about the colonial powers? They go first to the land which they want to colonize. And they therefore make sure that they put their foot down by force and they end up colonizing that place. That's what happens in the demonic system with your affairs. You are born again, but born again alone and coming to church for just a short service won't kill it. If you want to live victoriously as a dominion, you need to understand what you are fighting up against. You are fighting against principalities. Somebody thought principalities. Just like in our kingdom, our principalities are angelic beings. In the kingdom of darkness, the devil has what he calls principalities. And he is the chief prince. Yes. Remember, principalities are not demons. That's right. So, you can't cast out a principality. Right. Because what principalities in the demonic system do, they are the ones that come and entice you. You remember in the Garden of Eden, the devil did not force Adam and Eve to take that fruit enticed them principalities come therefore in the city of Perth targets the most powerful Christians targets and their greatest target principalities usually are prophets and apostles and I'll tell you why because prophets carry an eye for the future Stay with him, stay with me. Give me five minutes, I'm going to close right now. Every dominion must understand, that's you, must understand what I call their forbidden fruit. My greatest weakness may not be alcohol. My greatest weakness may not be addiction to smoking. My greatest witness may not be addictive to uh, substances or drugs. My witness might be women. And everybody here, don't be fooled, don't be fooled, don't be fooled. Everybody here, you have what we call your forbidden fruit. So if you know your forbidden fruit, which was what Adam and Eve were supposed to know, this tree is forbidden by God. If we eat of this, I lose my dominion. Principalities come and study. My sister and daughter, they come and study what's happening in the Zulu family. They come and study what's happening in the Moyo lineage. That's principalities. They study, they study. That is why they work with the familiar spirits because that's called family spirits. So they come and study what's happening in his lineage. And they realize, uh oh, the grandfather was a womanizer. The father was caught up with womanization. And therefore, it must run through the bloodline. The reason why you go to the doctor and they ask you that very same question. You don't know where it's coming from. It's a spiritual question. When the doctor says to you, who else in the family suffers from asthma? Because it runs in the bloodline. Because the devil understands the power of the blood. You are talking to me? Yeah. So when it comes, it, 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 it begins to entice him. Already knows 
the witness of the grandfather. So what do you think it's going to bring? Don't bring alcohol to him. It brings the witness. So then you wonder, see, cannot see a dress passing by. And you wonder, but I'm born again, I'm a child of God, what's happened? I can say that to him, he's my son. Uh, uh, Why am I being bound to this? It's like, I know I've confessed. I I, I went for deliverance and they they, they, they made me throw up things and they coughed me and I did everything. But there's this thing that seems to be following me everywhere because it's in the blood. If you don't understand how to deal with the bloodline issues, you are not going to win this battle. I want you to understand that destiny. It's in the blood. Somebody shout it's in the blood. The weaknesses you are fighting up against is in the blood. The same tendencies that you find yourself doing, even though you want to rise up and stand up, you declared the beginning of this year. 2024 is my year. But it doesn't look like it right now as we look at it because the enemy sends principalities. Somebody shout again, principalities. Their duty is to study and then colonize. After they entice you and you take the bait, they then send what is the number two one any longer? Powers. Somebody thought powers. powers. Whatever you call addiction today, in the spirit realm, invisible, it's not addiction. It's powers. Powers are those forces in the demonic system that come and enforce what you said yes to. You call it addiction in this world, but it's called powers in the other world because that's what the devil comes. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Principalities come in, entice you. You do it once, you think it's going to win. Next time you do two glasses, and then you think you're going to win. And the other time, three, four glasses, and then, and, and, then, and then you get comfortable. Principal then says, powers, come in. I think I got that one. And when they come in, the powers then, then they enforce. Once they enforce, what started as casual drinking, what started as a one-night stand, it becomes now the way of life. Why? Because the powers are now enforcing that. powers, what is it in that comes in there? Spiritual wickedness. That word is ponorious. The word ponorious has to do with the wickedness. So, when powers have enforced that, you know it's taking him, right? Because if you continue to be caught up in a vice and an addiction which you want to be set free from and it's not going, what ends up happening? You get worse. You then go for drugs. You then go to numb the pain. Because when you take drugs, you are wanting to numb the pain. You want to numb the pain because you can't deal with it. You become suicidal. Spiritual wickedness. The power of spiritual wickedness is to make sure you don't get better. Because what the enemy does, he minimizes sin before you do it. Then he maximizes it after you've done it. So spiritual wickedness, they are there to serve just to make sure that you fall in wickedness. So you find once a strong believer who used to love God, who used to pray, who used to be a leader, who used to be a pastor, you find themselves now, they've gone back to the world. Why? Spiritual wickedness is that desire. The very same person that was lying around, then you hear tomorrow, they are now HIV. Spiritual wickedness says now, we have done our part. Once they've reached that part, that part, make sure that you are now down, you're not going anywhere. Under the spiritual wickedness there, there is something that we call Rulers. 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 Oh, you don't have it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you, pressure to my girl. Now, under rulers, you will find out they're called rulers of darkness. Why are they called rulers of darkness? Because just like the Shire of the city of Gosnells, it works within the confines of the law system. But what you don't understand, this is just a picture of what is already in the spiritual realm. There are laws that are governing your life in the spiritual system. There are rules that govern you. Have you ever found yourself saying, I can't live without it? It has now become a law because the rulers, they put rules over your life. You get off these drugs, you die. You leave alcohol too soon, you're going to go mad. Keep on taking it. Because they 
bring control. They become legislators of your life. So you are not living your life of freedom. You are now under the rule or the rulership of the legislation of the spiritual powers of darkness. Am I talking to somebody? So once you understand that how rulers work, cosmos, kratos, they then hand over to you to the spiritual wickedness. Once after the spiritual wickedness has taken place, then you have got agents. What is a witch? A witch is an agent sent by the devil. So destiny needs to understand that when I say let's up our game in prayer and fasting is to help you because there will be witches that will come through the door talk to me there will be warlocks that will come to the service and they are sent serving under the spirit of wickedness and they are coming to come and curse and throw spells so whenever you say the service is heavy you are right but if you do not know how to address that systematic thing and break that spirit of wickedness you are succumbing to the power of darkness somebody declared the devil is a liar I see a church that is rising out of the shores of the city of Perth. A church that may not be flamboyant, that may not go with the chandeliers, but it has got a training ground for discipling men and women that are saying, I'm walking in dominion. I'm walking in authority. There's nothing that the devil can do over my life. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord God Almighty. I prophesy to every man and every woman here, it's time you take your authority. Don't allow the devil to take away your marriage. Don't allow the devil to take away your family. Don't allow the devil to take away your teenager. You stand your ground. It's a devil I understand. There is no power. There is no principality. There is no rule other than the rule of God. I am a dominion. Somebody shout that seven times. I am a dominion. Seven times. I God, I began to praise with me. Jesus' name. Did you learn something? Don't miss next week. I'll be giving you how do I become a priest. Stand on your feet with me if you will. Let's stand on our feet together. I want right now to begin to pray. Just begin to pray for yourself. Begin to pray and let the devil know you are taking your authority back. You are taking your dominion back. Everybody begin to pray right now. If you are born again and if you are in the spirit, so start praying. Start praying. Start praying. Start praying. Start praying. In Jesus' name. I can't hear you, Destiny. Pray, 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 pray.
lift up your hands to God with me in the presence of God. Just lift up your hands together with me and begin to declare this right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm taking back my ground. I'm taking back my ground. Taking back my territory. Taking back my territory. I take my dominion back. I take my dominion back. Thank you for the tools you've given me. Thank you for the tools you've given me. To rise above. To rise above. Every demonic system. I take my ground. I take my ground. And I say in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a liar. Devil, you are a liar. You can't have my life. You can't have my life. You can't have my family. I rise, I rise up today in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am a priest. I'm a priest. And I am a king. I, am a king. I rule. I rule with the Lord Jesus Christ. With the Lord Jesus Christ. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a big hand of praise together with you. Thank you, Lord.